New parents look at successful families and successful parents and they just want to copy them and so they try to do the things that they think that they did to get their family so smart and good and whatever, which is really just a, can be a really bad mistake of correlation causality. So like you're going to take your kid to, you know, every mommy and me music class and you're going to take them to the museum and start looking at all the Greek and Roman sculptures. and. You probably already were playing Mozart in the womb and things just to get the brain really stimulated. And it turns out that as best as we can tell from looking at data of actual parents and children along these dimensions, that none of that stuff really matters. It, it just doesn't make your child better, smarter. It might make you happier, might even make them happier, might also make them miserable. But it turns out that those are not causal elements. I always said, you can teach a kid just as much at the grocery store as you can in a museum, maybe more. My entire academic life has been devoted to figuring out tricky ways to get at causality, because the world doesn't just offer you up causality. Okay, what you see in the world is correlation. What the world gives you is things are moving together or they aren't. But to be useful, you need to dive down and be able to strip away what's causing what and what's not causing what. The data that we've looked at suggests that by the time you actually have a kid, most of the choices you make that will make you a good parent, you've already made them. So if you go to the store and buy 10 parenting books, it's probably not gonna really help the kid that much, but the fact that you're the kind of person who as a parent cares enough to go buy 10 parenting books, even if you don't read them, that probably means you're a pretty good parent. It's just don't think that the books are gonna have a magic effect.